people's lives in the confessional, the holy sacrifice of the mass, and St. Charles Borromeo Seminary has been a treasure for, for the Archdiocese of Philadelphia. Good evening, everyone. My name is Joe Aguilani. I'm a member of Parish Council, also the youth minister here. But on behalf of Father Mormon and the Parish Council, uh, we have our annual um, presentation from Archbishop Chapu, but also for the, for the seminary appeal. Um, so we have a brief presentation, and then we have a seminarian here this evening who's going to be speaking to us about his vocation and what St. Charles Seminary does for him. priest is entrusted with a really profound responsibility to enter into some of the most intimate moments of people's lives in the confessional, the holy sacrifice of the mass, and 
when a loved one dies, the priest is there. I'm Father Anthony Raimundo, and uh, this is my parish, St. Robert Bellarmine. St. Charles um, was one place where I felt totally confident to give my heart to the church. Every person is created in the image and likeness of God. We're wired for a relationship with God. Priests lead people to God. A priest is entrusted with a really profound responsibility to enter into some of the most intimate moments of people's lives in the confessional, the holy sacrifice of the mass, and when a loved one dies, the priest is there. I'm Father Anthony Raimundo, and uh, this is my parish, St. Robert Bellarmine. St. Charles um, was one place where I felt totally confident to give my heart to the church. St. Charles Borromeo Seminary has been a treasure for the Archdiocese of Philadelphia and her people. Its mission of forming priests is vital to the welfare of our parishes and their people now and in the future. It is a blessing to have St. Charles Seminary in existence. It's been a blessing to me personally. I think that I've grown quite a lot since I walked through the doors here, both intellectually and in all the things that I've learned, but also spiritually. And I've definitely been formed into a better man. Our seminary is also an active center of education and ongoing formation for religious and lay men and women living out their vocations in service to those around them. St. Charles Seminary really has such a benefit for all people because it not only enriches my life, but it also enriches the lives of those that I have the opportunity to teach and the opportunity to minister to as an IHM sister and also as a theology teacher. My name is Scott McDonald. I've been in the uh, diaconate program now uh, for six years. Formation is seven years long. Businessmen tend to think, oh, let's just get it done faster. You know, we, we can we can get this done, but it's not just an education, it's really formation. So we're really being changed. The spirit of St. Charles Borromeo Seminary is vibrant and alive. Our seminarians' constant devotion in answering God's call to serve is impactful for our faithful Catholic community. As we move forward with plans to relocate to Lower Gwinnett, on property purchased from Good University University. The seminary continues to concentrate on its core mission. Our programs form priests, deacons, and lay leaders who will be missionary disciples after the heart of Jesus Christ. The work and success of the seminary would not be possible without your support and dedication. You, the faithful, serve our seminarians and students just as much as they will serve you. The deacon is a witness to other people that you can have God in your life, you can have a family, and we bring those experiences to our homilies and can touch upon things that the priest might not be able to. To have future priests, you do need St. Charles Seminary to inform young men to respond to the call and to bring the sacraments to the people. The work of our priestly formation can't be continued unless we have uh, that support. My goodness, without the seminary, um, I don't know what we do. Without the seminary, there are no priests. Without priests, there is no Eucharist. Please do give to the seminary. St. Charles Seminary needs you now. Our seminarians and the people we serve and form, they need you now. So please help us now. So as an IHM sister, where our main focus is on education, God has called me to be a high school theology teacher. And by giving to St. Charles Seminary, you're helping me to fulfill that call and that gift that God has given to me. Our seminarians, deacon candidates, and students, together with our generous supporters, truly define the seminary. Please prayerfully consider making a gift today. Your generosity will assist us in upholding the seminary's strong tradition of excellence. Without you, 
none of this would be possible. Please support this year's St. Charles Borromeo Seminary Appeal. The seminary truly remains for today, for tomorrow, for all of us. So you just saw the uh, presentation. Um, in a special way, too, um, tonight we have the seminary that's here is an alum of Bishop Shanahan High School, where I teach. So I'm really excited to have him here with us this evening. Thank you again for your support. God bless you. opening hymn, please join in singing hymn number 197, Come Ye Thankful People Come, 197. sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to my God and to my brothers and sisters that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my own serious fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, of the Virgin, all the angels of Satan, and you, my brothers and sisters, pray for me to the Lord our God. Mighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. In the glory of God. 
let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, the constant gladness of being devoted to you for his full and lasting happiness to serve with constancy the author of all that is good. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. 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 A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. In those days, I, Daniel, heard this word of the Lord. At that time, there shall arise Michael, the great prince, guardian of your people. It shall be a time unsurpassed in distress since nations began until that time. At that time, your people shall escape everyone who is found written in the book. Many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Some shall live forever. Others shall be in everlasting horror and disgrace. But the wise shall shine brightly like the splendor of the firmament. And those who lead the many to justice shall be like the stars forever. The word of the Lord. Thank you, God. to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, every priest stands daily at his ministry, offering frequently those same sacrifices that can never take away sins. But this one offered one sacrifice for sins, 
and took his seat forever at the right hand of God. Now he waits until his enemies are made his footstool. For by one offering, he has made perfect forever those who are being consecrated. Where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer offering for sin. The word of the Lord. disciples in those days after that tribulation, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from the sky, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken, and they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory, and then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the end of the sky. Learn a lesson from the fig tree. When its branch becomes tender and sprouts leaves, you know that summer is near. In the same way, when you see these things happening, know that he is near at the gates. Amen, I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But of that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. I want to look at two different things briefly, uh, since we have seminarians who are speaking after my homily. But I want to just to summarize the uh, last few weeks with the second reading from Hebrews, which has been about the priesthood of Jesus Christ and how every priest shares in that one priesthood and how he's both the priest and the sacrifice and uh, as we heard from the earlier uh, when we receive the host, host comes from the Latin hostia meaning victim, so we're receiving the victim who is Christ himself so I just want to show this brief uh, summary just to tie that up uh, this is, we've had a series of the same theme from Hebrews Feast of our Lord Jesus Christ, the eternal high priest, according to the order of Melchizedek, in a unique priesthood. In him the Father has been well pleased from before all time, as mediator between God and human beings, fulfilling his Father's will, he sacrificed himself once on the altar of the cross, as a saving victim for the whole world, thus instituting the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice for the brother's kindness he chose from among the children of Adam men to augment the priesthood, so that from the sacrifice continually renewed in the church, streams of divine power might flow, whereby a new heaven and a new earth might be made. Throughout the whole universe, it would be perfected what no eye has seen, no ear has heard, nor has entered into the human heart. And then the gospel today, which is going to lead us into next weekend as well, and really the beginning of Advent, it's talking about the second coming of Christ. And so, if we want to take home 
anything, it's basically the theme is to be prepared. You always, there's no need to be fearful if you're prepared. And so we're asking to prepare for the end of time, also to be prepared for the end of each of our own lives if we don't know when that will be. And so we make use of the sacraments, especially Eucharist and confession, but also good works, prayer, etc. We, we know what the, the uh, theme is for that. And so one thing we're reminded of as well is that despite every several years someone comes up with this date for the end of time, we can know that's not going to happen. Uh, no one can know the end of time because it says it right here in the gospel that only the Father knows the date of the end of time. We can always dismiss any so-called visionary who says they know uh, when the end of time is because that would mean that Jesus was wrong. And I don't think that would be the case. And so in the Sistine Chapel, uh, lesser known work of Michelangelo is the last judgment. So we're, we're used to talking about the ceiling in the Sistine Chapel at the Vatican. But behind the main altar in the Sistine Chapel is another work from Michelangelo, which is The Last Judgment. And you can look that up online. What's interesting about it is it's basically, you know, shows what we would imagine it to be at the end of time. Christ is coming back as judge. And there's angels lifting people from their graves up into heaven. Now they're glorified bodies to be reunited, reunited with their souls. We have demons uh, pulling people down. And one part of the painting is a little jarring because this one man, he's being pulled down, but he look, his face says, I, don't, I can't believe I'm going down. I thought I was going up. And so it's a little jarring. And so uh, it makes you think. And so for us, again, we don't need to be fearful if we're prepared. And so it's a matter of just always acting as if the end of time is just around the corner. Uh, and so I just want to close some words from St. Augustine. You will judge the world with equity and the peoples in his truth. What are equity and truth? We will gather together with him for the judgment, his chosen ones, but the others he will set apart. But he will place some on his right, others on his left. And so it talks about Matthew 25, recognizing Christ and those in need. What is more equitable? What more true than that they should not themselves expect mercy from the judge? who themselves were unwilling to show mercy before the judge's coming. Those who, ever, who were willing to show mercy will be judged with mercy. For it will be said that to those placed in his right, come, blessed of my Father, take possession of the kingdom, which prepared for you, which has been prepared for you from the beginning of the world. And so now we switch gears a little bit. We have a seminarian from St. Charles Seminary to talk on behalf of the Seminary Appeal. This is a direct mail appeal, so uh, you should have gotten something at home in the mail. If you did not, we do have envelopes at the, uh, or uh, forms at the doorways you can take home if you want to donate towards St. Charles Seminary, where I was ordained out of there in 1994. Uh, Mark Goma uh, is a 2018 graduate of Shanahan High School in Westchester. He was taught by uh, Joe Colante. Our youth minister, we won't pull that against him. And we thank him for coming forward and talking about the seminary appeal. There's one last thing. The we do have a second collection today. If you remember, it's for the carpet replacement in the church. So don't get confused that it has to do with the seminary. Although if you're gonna give them a lot of money, then you can be confused. Okay, come forward. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. I would just like to start off by saying thank you. Uh, thank you for having me here. Thank you, Father Mormon, for letting me come out here to St. Isaac Joe's. And um, thank you to all of you who have already supported the Seminary Appeal, especially throughout the years. Um, Isaac Joe's is a very good supporter of vocations and the seminary, and um, I doubt that will ever change, and I thank you all for that. So, you know, the great video that was shown earlier at Mass um, some of the priests, those are my friends, you know, those deacons, those are my friends. Um, and I think they really hit the point home where, you know, seminary, we need it. You know, we need priests, uh, we need good priests. And uh, I thought I might, you know, gear my talk towards, you know, my own story, how I ended up in seminary, and, you know, kind of how I've seen it affect my own life and my own vocation, my own discernment. Um, 
it's funny. Uh, discernment, vocation, it's a, it can be a tough thing, for sure. All, all the married people here, everyone here has their own vocation. Priests, single people. And um, if you think about it, it really is a love story for all of us. And my love story, my vocation, my vocational discernment, um, kind of started when I was pretty young. Um, in seventh grade, I was an altar server, and I loved altar serving. I'm from Coatesville, our lady of the rosary. So I'm not too far away. Um, and I started altar serving in second grade. And, you know, years and years go by. I'm in seventh grade. I still, I'm still altar serving. And, um, and I love it. You know, there's something different. Something about being at Mass and, you know, intentionally giving up your time for the Lord. And um, in seventh grade, I remember this great homily by an August, uh, an Augustinian priest that would help out of my parish. Uh, he, he told us, um, you know, every time somebody receives communion, you know, pray, pray, see what happens. Ask the Lord to grant you a grace. And for him, he said it was always happiness. You know, he always smiled. And you know, in seventh grade, I'm like, okay, you know, I like it up here. I'm comfortable. Um, let me pray. So after communion, I, I pray. I'm like, Lord, give me the grace, whatever I need. And I felt the most peace in my life I've ever felt in my life, ever. Um, and it continued to happen. After each communion, I would go up and, you know, I'd sit in my pew, kneel, and I'd pray. I'd say, Lord, grant me the grace and peace that I felt that day. And you never stopped. And I found love. And I wanted to share this with people. And I thought, how could I possibly do that? This peace that I feel that the Lord has granted me, how could I share that with people? I fell in love with the peace, and I realized, you know, what if I became a priest? I could, I could minister the Eucharist to everybody. I could preach the gospel. I could share this peace that I felt in seventh grade and kind of make it more than my own. It was going great, you know. I was only in seventh grade. I had these big ambitions uh, of being this great priest. And, you know, an eighth grade came around. Um, one of the toughest moments of my life, uh, my grandfather passed away on my father's side. And I, I say it was tough, um, more than I guess I would have liked to admit, because I didn't really get to know my grandfather. Um, for reference, um, my parents are from Philippines. I was born in PA. So my closest family next to people in Philippines and California is Maryland, and that's where my grandfather was. And I felt a great regret that day, you know, a sadness. Um, not because he had passed away, but because I never had the chance to love him. Again, I kind of see vocation as a, a love story, an ongoing love story. I fell in love with the peace of the altar. Um, then I, I fell in love with the idea of, you know, of love, you know, and who, who is love but Christ? And um, I wanted to share not just peace, I wanted to share love with everybody that I met because I felt that regret in my life, knowing that I, I didn't love someone I should have gotten to. And I'm um, like, how could I do that? I, I, I could be a priest. And then they said, wait, 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 I could also be a doctor. So, you know, I was like, okay, no. I was, I was a pretty studious kid, so I went, I went up to Bishop Shannon High School, um, freshman, sophomore year. I was a total total nerd. I, lo I loved my studies. Um, it, it, it was great. I loved biology. I loved the sciences. And I, loved, I have a love for that to this day. But, you know, I, I kind of grew arrogant and closed off. You know, I kind of tunnel vision to my, my life. I'm like, I'm just going to be a doctor. I'm going to heal people. I'm going to save people's lives. That's all I wanted to do. And, um, you know, this idea of the priesthood in seventh grade, you know, just kept sitting in the back of my head. It never left. Then a sophomore year, a teacher at Shanahan, Mrs. Dougherty, she assigned us to write a homily for a project. And after that homily, I'm like, wait, I could, I could do this. You know, I, I could write homilies. I could, I could go preach. Uh, so I was like, oh, okay. So... Priests, all they do is they serve at the altar and they give homilies. How, how hard is that? I can do that. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, yeah. Priesthood, well, think about it again. But still, you know, I was like, I'm going to be a doctor. I need to save people's lives. There was this regret, like I said, in my heart that I felt like I needed to save people. Like God was calling me to do that. And, you know, throughout high school, I, I, I thought about the priesthood. I visited the seminary several times. I got to know the guys. Um, I think one of the greatest parts or most important parts of discerning your vocation is to really, you know, meet people who love that part, who love that vocation. You know, meet happy married couples, meet happy single people, meet happy religious, happy happy seminarians, happy priests. And um, you know, I kept going back, and I was like, man, I really like, I really like the idea of being a doctor, but the, the seminary, the priesthood, is in the back of my mind. Um, you know, junior and senior year, I decided to apply um, to 
what was then a new class. Uh, it was a peer ministry class at Shanahan. And um, I, grew, I fell in love again, you know? I fell in love with peace, I wanted to share that peace. I fell in love with love, Christ, I wanted to share that love. Um, but I fell in love with service. The people that I met there, they weren't just there to be the best in the class. They were there to serve their peers. And that was really inspiring to me. And um, it really changed my gears around, you know? I, I, am I really looking at being a doctor for the sake of, you know, loving others, helping others? Or am I doing it because I kind of, I had that hole, that regret in eighth grade that I felt, and I just wanted to heal it somehow. Then, you know, time to go, time to go to college. It was a senior year of high school. I had applied to so many schools for pre-med. I even committed to University of Pittsburgh to study pre-med biology. And I had a roommate, I had everything set up, and I was, you know, I was, I was all ready to go. But something in the back of my head was telling me, you know, apply to seminary, apply to seminary. And um, I was talking to the vocation director at the time, the father DeLacy, and he said, you know what, Mark? I want you to think about something. There's more than one way to save people, and that hit hard. You know, I wanted to save people medically, physically, you know? I wanted them to stay here on earth, you know, as long as they could, love the people they could. And um, Father DeLacy reminded me, he said, you know, priests, they heal the heart, they heal the soul. They're there at the last moment and at the beginning of each, you know, at the, at the last moment of a person's life and at the beginning at baptism. You know, they're there throughout the whole journey. And, you know, I fell in love with, you know, these, these ideas, you know, peace, love in Christ, service. And those were all Christ-like things. I fell in love with Christ. And, you know, I decided to give it a go. I said, you know, one year of seminary, I'll fly. If I get in, if I, then I get in. Um, but I'll give it a year. That's it. And then I'll go on. I'll move on, get it out of the back of my head. You know, and then four years later, I'm still here. And let me tell you, it is still a love story. All the priests, all the deacons that you saw in that video, we all fell in love at one point with Christ, with you, the people of God. Um, and we want to serve you. You know, we want, to, we want to share his love with you. We want you to find peace in this world. All those things that I desire so much to share. And um, seminary has done that for me. And without the seminary, I don't know where I'd be. Maybe, maybe I would be studying well on my way to med school, maybe. But this is definitely where God wanted me to be. And that's where he wanted them to be. That's where he wanted Father Mormon to be, you know. God has a plan for all of us, and it's all a love story. And seminary is an important part for some of us discerning that into the priesthood. And like the video said, you know, there's a theological study school for lay people too at the seminary. Not only priests are being formed there, and it's an important part of all our lives, one way or another. And um, I hope that, you know, you guys continue to persevere, stay strong in your own vocations. Um, you know, like I said, God loves you. Find that peace. Um, Hopefully one day, uh, through my service, I'll be able to minister to you, too. And um, thank you again. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I can't say enough um, for the past support in the years. The seminary has, has really been an important place for me and my brother's lives. And I can call them that. My brothers at the seminary are waiting, waiting to serve God and waiting to serve you. So thank you. of believers, may the Lord continue to bless our efforts in building the kingdom of God on earth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For the sick and all who suffer, may the Holy Spirit restore them to fullness of life and health. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For all who have died in the light of Christ, May they enjoy the everlasting light of God's presence 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, here we are. In the intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray in particular for the happy repose of the soul of Mrs. Joanne Bricko, for whom this Mass is being offered. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Almighty Father, attend to the prayers of your holy people as we watch and wait in your Son's return. We ask this through Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> Please join in singing hymn number 680, The Lord is My Light, 680. happiness of Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. right and just, our duty and our salvation, always everywhere, give you thanks to our Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. You laid the foundations of the world, you have arranged the changing of times and seasons, you formed us in your own image and set humanity over the whole world and all its wonder. We rule your name over all you have made, and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. So with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. <laughs> Thank you. 
be holy, O Lord, and all your created right and give you praise. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, for the power and work of the Holy Spirit, and give life to all things and make them holy. You never cease to gather a people to yourself, so from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice will be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we brought to you for consecration. They may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. On the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, it was supper with ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection. Until you come, until you come again. Therefore, Lord, we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, whose wondrous resurrection and ascension to heaven has been afforded with second coming. We offer you with thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognize the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. We make us eternal offering to you, so we may obtain an inheritance from the elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, the glorious martyrs, and St. Isaac Joves, with all the saints in whose constant intercession in your presence we rely on unfailing help. For this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, Advance the peace and salvation of all the world. And please confirm in faith and charity your public church on earth, your servant Francis our Pope, and Nelson our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people who came to your own. As so gracious and prayers this family who have summoned before you, in your compassion, merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. For our departed brothers and sisters, all who are pleasing to you with their passing this life, your kind of it is to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, to whom bestow in the world all that is good. So we will give with you in the name of God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. in our days by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and sinful distress as we wait the blessed hope and coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. For the the power of Lord Jesus Christ with your apostles peace I leave you my peace I give you with not on our sins and the faith of your church and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
behold the Lamb of God, who holds him and takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter into my room. Choice is the word, and my soul shall be healed. to receive communion single file space those receiving on the tongue end of line middle eye Please join in singing hymn number 402, There is a Longing, 402.
second collection, which is for capital improvement, will now be taken. This collection will be strictly used to replace the carpet in the main church. Please help us achieve this goal. You will receive a mailing from the seminary directly for their annual seminary appeal, thanking you in advance for your support. Please refer to the insert in the bulletin pertaining to the Knights of Columbus crab cake sale. Please refer to the bulletin and our website for more announcements. Let us pray. We have partaken of the gift of the sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him will bring us growth and charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. Again, we thank Mark for being here and giving his talk. I was impressed he didn't use any notes. And he'll be in the back to greet people and I'll be on the side. If you want to avoid both of us, there's still <laughs> morning with you. Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us this hour. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God and you be humbly bright. Do thou, Jesus, have the host, the power of God, cast in on Satan, and all the evil spirits. Amen. For our closing hymn, please join in singing hymn number 719. Alleluia, sing to Jesus, 719.